This week in Beyond the Headlines, wreaths tossed in memory of perished slaves. Let us imagine if we were on those ships, if our family was on those ships, would we want those who have lost their lives, our family members, to be honored? If our lives were lost, would we like our children to tell our story, brothers and sisters? This is what we must ask ourselves. How many people sit and reflect on the lives of Africans that were lost, not just around the world, but right here in the British Virgin Islands for the sake of freedom? During the month of February, many countries pause to reflect upon the history of the African diaspora, the historic movement of Africans and their descendants to places throughout the world. It also refers to Africans who were enslaved and shipped to the Americas by way of the Atlantic slave trade. Black History Month, as the month-long celebration is known, also recognizes the accomplishments of black men and women throughout the course of history, whose contributions to the world would otherwise go unnoticed. Black heroes and heroines are remembered such as Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X and Rosa Parks, all African civil rights activists who in one way or another fought for the freedom and equality of Africans. And they are the famous black inventors like George Alcorn, Benjamin Banneker and Dr. Charles Drew, who brought us the imaging x-ray, clock and blood bank respectively. But how many are aware of just how much these men, women and children sacrificed during their journey from Africa and why? On Sunday, February 5th, a small group gathered near the cruise ship pier to reflect on the many lives that were lost during the transatlantic move of African slaves out of Africa. So Wanda Uhuru said that those present at the ceremony were there because of the decisions made by their ancestors to persevere for a better life not just for themselves but for the generations to come. Uhuru painted the horrific scene of African slaves packed together on board ships and faced to survive deplorable conditions. But he said through their faith in God and each other, many of them were able to survive. For us to be here today, there had to be someone somewhere who thought, I have to stay alive. Our ancestors who came to this place did not come of their own volition, brothers and sisters. The wind that is to my back is what pushed the sails of the ships that they were packed in like sardines, brothers and sisters. where they had to taste of each other's vomit, both blood, feces even, brothers and sisters. Dehumanized. But in the midst of it, and this is the way we have to focus on, they held on to their God. They held on to each other. And they ensured with God's help, we would survive. During his oration, Uhuru looked at the importance of recognizing those who lost their lives, a custom that exists in different circles around the world, and one that he noted should be upheld for those who died during the Atlantic slave trade. Different peoples around the world, whenever they had members of their family, their people, who, in a war, in a conflict, lost their lives, they honor them. Because life is sacred. And if when we lose our lives, it goes unnoticed, life is cheapened, brothers and sisters. And we know that the descendants of African people. In present times, it seems as though our lives have been cheapened. Let us imagine if we were on those ships, if our family was on those ships, 
what we want those who have lost their lives, our family members, to be honored? If our lives were lost, would we like our children to tell our story, brothers and sisters? This is what we must ask ourselves. The Bible tells you you must honor your elders, that your days might be long. We must honor our elders and our elders' elders and our elders' elders. Why stop at our grandparents, brothers and sisters? Let's honor our great, 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 great. We could not be here without them. So your presence here, not just here at the cruise ship pier, but your existence, period, should not be taken for granted. Three years ago, it was Gil Trot who stood alone at the water's edge and in solidarity cast a wreath into the sea as he paid homage to those who perished crossing the Atlantic. On Sunday, joined by several others, Trot spoke about the importance of teaching the territory's children about their history, particularly as it relates to the slave trade. How could anyone do this? to another human being. But we hear of six million died and it's called the Holocaust. The Holocaust. Like that was the first and only one. I hear a figure of 16 million alone that died on the trip across the Atlantic Ocean. I don't hear too much about that. Never did. That's leaving out. He estimated 250 million altogether before they came to the ships in the dungeons in Ghana, aboard the ships, after they got off the ships, and still counting today, believe it or not. Still, we don't hear too much about that. But something had to be done. We can't let our children grow up like that. And I still ask the question, how could we even this far ignore those that died on that trip across the Atlantic Ocean? Amistad, the movie, gave a very good depiction of that. I'd like to see that in the theater sometime this month. They need a copy of it, they can have mine. But this story should never go away. Because when they say you, if you ignore history, you're bound to repeat it. That's a known fact. And still, we are told to forget it. But we are not going to forget it. We can't forget it. Our children are too precious. You see, we have one fault. I don't say it's a fault, but it all comes from miseducation. When we say, I want something to leave for my children, my grandchildren, that's as far as we go, usually. The oppressor plans 2,000 years ahead. They plan the Atlantic slave trade the transatlantic slave trade 500 years before it happened. They haven't done with us yet. Our children need to know this. One of the most memorable moments on Sunday, and perhaps one of the most meaningful for many, was the libation, which is a ritual pouring of a liquid in memory of those who have died. At the helm of the ritual was Ankh Benu, chief priest of Henensu, a community whose members are scattered across the globe. A solemn prayer was said as the short ceremony was performed in the presence of the supporters and onlookers. Who comes as the hierarchy of angelic beings? Thank you for the great powers of transformation. Ita Elm Tahuti, Pai Maduna Tail, Pai Inchayes, Pai Ea Anitu. 
who comes as the mind of God, the will of God, the word of God. Thanks for the wisdom. Our hearts belong to you. Ita M. Sekert. Toa in Ongir. Toa in Usur Ur Shakum. Toa in Second Letter. Any Second Letter. Who comes as Second? The divine plan. Thank you for the great powers of omnipotence. Thank you for the divine plan in our destiny. Thank you for eternal life. Ita in Ma'at, why in the air been up in Ma'at? Who comes as Ma'at, the divine law. Thank you for keeping our hearts stable to their truth. Ita El Herukuti, why in Pocket of that poor set? Who comes as Herukahuti? Justice. Thank you for overthrowing the evil, emotional, and sensual aspects of our being. Ita em heru dwa in uchara kut dwa in air. Who comes as heru, the will. Thank you for the eyesight of the God of light. Thank you for the freedom to choose, to hear truth, to follow the will of God. Ita em heteru dwa in gimi meri wo hetep dwa in neki neki who comes as heteru thank you for the love joy harmony and peace thank you for all the sweetness and the beauty in life at the ceremony chief benu explained that white is the color traditionally worn at the service because africans do not believe in death he said for them there is no death but rather the celebration of life and the white signifies this transition from death into light beings in this kind of um ceremony memorial ceremony um when we're honoring our ancestors, the throne, the seat, there's always a seat, a throne that is reserved and is left open for them. And partially the reason why we're wearing white, uh, real white, okay, because what we know as white, as in Caucasian, white is not white. There's no such thing as white people, okay? But um, when you look at many of the traditional cultures in, on the continent, in the motherland, even traditional Asian cultures, you find that it is white that is worn to honor the ancestors and to send them along their way when they make their transition into their next life. You see? So white wasn't born uh just for weddings and black to funerals we didn't wear black to funerals we wore white because we didn't see um this death we had no concept of death our ancestors remained with us as light beings white you see and in ancient kemet the deity that is related or corresponded to the ancestors is Osir or Osar, who the Greek call Osiris. And the white crown that he wears on his head is called Etef, which means the father. Okay? And when each and every person, whether they be male or female, made their transition into the next realm, into the next life, they were seen as unified with their father. And they were addressed or they had the name Osir attached to the front of their name to show that they had lived the life for purity and true of voice indeed and were able to now join the ancestors, join the creator and to unite with the divine. So you saw the Osir Ani, the Osir uh, Nefertari, you see, whether they be man or woman, both were equated with the divine. Both were united with the divine once they made their transition. So we're not here to celebrate death. We're here 
to uplift our ancestors and send them on their way so that they continue on their journey because life for African people is eternal. You see? That's why we're here and that's why we're wearing white. Because we don't celebrate death. There is no death. At the end of the ceremony, everyone gathered by the water where the wreath and flowers were respectively tossed into the water. What started out with one individual in 2010 grew into a small gathering by 2011, and this year the biggest turnout to date was witnessed on Sunday afternoon. It is anticipated that as more persons learn about the meaning behind the wreath tossing ceremony, the turnout will continue to grow as the years go by. Ashe means it is so. Ashe is an affirmation that means it is so. And today we affirm that we will never forget our ancestors, Ashe. You repeat, Ashe. Today we affirm we will never forget our ancestors, Ashe. We'll remember our great greats and our great greats, Ashe. We'll remember the struggle of our mothers, Ashe. We'll remember the struggles of our fathers, Ashe. We'll remember from whence we came, Ashe. We'll remember how we loved each other, Ashe. We will continue to love each other, Ashe. We remember our families, Ashe. We will build strong families, Ashe. We will remember how we healed sickness, Ashe. We will continue to heal ourselves, Ashe. We'll remember strong economies ashe we'll continue to build strong economies ashe we'll remember how we how we revered life ashe we will continue to uphold and to revere life ashe we'll continue to worship the creator ashe we will never forget ancestors such as marcus gavi ashe ya asanti we ya asanti we ashe uh, Sabukwe Ashe, Patrice Lamumba Ashe, Malcolm X Ashe, Walter Rodney Ashe. If you have any names, you can repeat the names yourself. Ashe, Noah Lloyd Ashe, Dr. Ben, Dr. ben Ashe, Dr. Dr. Clark Ashe, Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King Ashe. Kwame Ture Ashe, Medgar Egbert Ashe, Harriet Tubman Ashe, Willard Whitley Ashe, Gad Malone Ashe, Laverty Stout Ashe, Elijah Muhammad Ashe, Ashe. Even the names of your own. Immediate family members, Ashe. Laverty South, Ashe. Noah Lloyd, Ashe. Ras Uhuru, Ashe. Dr. Eric Williams, Ashe. Bob Marley, Ashe. This is Walter Barrett, Beyond the Headlines.